Well, for more on that, we're joined by David Gardenstein Ross for, from the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, a nonpartisan policy institute focusing on foreign policy and national security. David, thanks so much for joining us. How much are these security failures a French problem? How much are they a European problem? They're both. As the parliamentary inquiry uh, clearly indicates. Uh, you have overlapping jurisdictions within Paris, lack of coordination um, throughout uh, the French state, uh, but also the inquiry talks about lack of intelligence sharing uh, throughout the continent. So there's some things that uh, France can act on directly and has within its power to fix the organizational design for its own problems, but in other cases it's going to have to coordinate with other European states. And one thing it can do, as the report concludes, uh, is form its own unified French intelligence structure, something along the, uh, the lines of the FBI in the United States. First of all, why doesn't that exist yet, and will it be easy for France to form? I think the reason it doesn't exist is basically a historical one. Uh, you know, all of the institutions uh, that you have throughout Europe are really a legacy of the past uh, 30, 40 years. They're designed for a different time and for a different set of threats and for terrorist groups that functioned in a different way. Um, you know, that being said, uh, this structure takes on an imperative of its own. Uh, within this structure, you have uh, people who are locked in with that form of bureaucracy and different kinds of uh, provincialism and different kinds of rivalries uh, that exist, all of which do make it difficult to change. But I think that the inquiry uh, puts out the exact right model uh, to try to create something that's a bit more unified. Now, it's not clear that it will function like the FBI, which is a national police force. One of the models they're talking about is the National Counterterrorism Center, which is more of a coordinating body. But either way, creating more unity among them and reducing the amount of overlap and the uh, amount of clashing bureaucracies is definitely a step in the right direction. And Debbie, the report also recommends, though, better security in Greece and as well as along the Turkey-Syrian border. First, do you think Europe could be doing more to help patrol that Turkey-Syria border, or would that just infringe too much on the sovereignty of another country? Well, that would have to be done, obviously, with the uh, cooperation of Turkey and with Turkey wanting to have assistance in securing its border. So that's something that, that really is between European negotiators um, and uh, the Turkish state. I know that Turkey has had trouble securing that border. Whether or not it wants help is a, another question, given the sovereignty concerns that you mentioned. Uh, with respect to the Greek border, though, it's very clear that this is a, a porous border. And, um, you know, uh, ISIS using refugee flows to get operatives in uh, has, in fact, had an impact in, in the uh, two most recent large-scale uh, attacks in Western European states. Uh, so I think that that is an important recommendation. Uh, and throughout the uh, system of dealing with irregular migrant entry, there have been a lot of problems in terms of uh, getting people's uh, details and then letting them go. By the time a background check is performed, often someone who has terrorist connections can no longer be found. Okay, David Gartenstein-Ross, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for sharing your insight.